to. In the last two months, the New York Times columnist Ross Doffett has written two articles about the Vatican II Council. The Vatican II Council happened 60 years ago, and it was part of the way that the Roman Catholic Church tried to modernize itself and to open itself to the world. Ross Doffett believes that the Vatican II Council was ultimately a failure, and he believes that what happened was that by changing too much too quickly, it eroded a culture of obligation. In other words, that people in the old days felt like they had to go to church, and when you change so many different things, they felt less, less, less as if they needed to be there. He cites as evidence just decline in church participation, um, that fewer percentage of people in, in various countries identify themselves as Roman Catholic. In other words, by making these changes that um, we've undermined people's piety. Now one of the main goals, of the stated goals of Vatican II, was the unity of all Christians. And as a non-Roman Catholic, I believe that the Vatican II Council was a tremendous success. Um, in many ways, it made it possible for me to have a very different kind of piety and a different life of faith. Now, I disagree with Doffet in, in, in many different ways. One of the things he finds fault with is he doesn't like the idea of Lutherans and Catholics, for instance, having communion with one another. And for me, that is one of the most beautiful signs of Christ's love in the world, that we can share table with one another, where um, we aren't excluding one another from our primary forms of worship. Another thing that I love very much about the Vatican II Council was the way that it opened the world so that world religions could be in conversation with one another. So I grew up in an, in an environment where I could learn from Buddhists and, is, and Muslims and from Jews. It, it was a, open, a more open world where we recognized that we all struggle with similar spiritual challenges and we can learn from one another. An important part of Vatican II was also um, having the worship services be in the vernacular. So rather than having worship be in Latin, the worship was in the language of the people, uh, uh, of the people so they could understand what was happening. Um, these led to some big reforms in how we do worship in church. One of the main ways that we've changed worship since I've been a boy was that when I was a child, um, we would have um, baptisms be private affairs just with the priest and the family on a Saturday afternoon. And today, uh, on Sunday, we, we had 15 baptisms here at Grace Communion. It was a huge celebration. It was just the way that church should be, of welcoming these new families and these new babies into the life of Christ. And it's a huge change, and it's one that I think is entirely for the better. One of the changes that we have more um, deacons uh, than before. We didn't have deacons as an order, and the deacons have enriched our life of faith tremendously. And another huge change is a new openness to talking about who can be a priest. In the Episcopal Church, we began ordaining women in 1975, and since then we've begun to ordain openly LGBTQ plus people. Um, one of my favorite priests of all time is a trans priest who I've known since he was 18 years old, uh, and he's tremendous intellect, tremendous asset and benefit and gift to our church. The reform spirit of the 1960s is still with us. It's still with the Roman Catholic Church, it's still with um, the Episcopal Church, um, and it's, it's opening us to a new world of connection, a new world of acceptance and love, just the kind of world that Jesus exemplified in his openness to people from all different kinds of parts of society. I believe that Christians are at their best, not when they try to form a kind of an exclusive club, but when they're open um, and when they're inviting and when they're, they can be part of the world. And so I'm grateful for um, the visionary leaders who are part of Vatican II and for all the people who follow in their footsteps. My name is Malcolm Clemens Young. I'm the Dean of Grace Cathedral here in San Francisco, California. Thanks for watching. More good news.